Dr. Bruce Lipton had an amazing career ahead of him. A tenured professor in a highly respected university in the field of stem cell research, an area of knowledge about to explode with opportunity. And then he made a discovery, and all that changed. It doesn't always pay to be first amongst peers to make a new scientific discovery. Just ask Albert Einstein, who was laughed out of almost every academic institution upon discovering his theory of relativity. Even when proven repeatedly, facts that threaten to turn existing facts into fiction are rarely ever appreciated when they first appear. And that's what Bruce discovered, in addition to what he observed about human cells and genes, which is this. When cells behave dysfunctionally, if he changed the environment the cells were in, by removing them from their bodies and placing them in a petri dish, the cell's behavior would become normal again. This meant that cell behavior was not being determined by the genes inside them. So if genes weren't determining cell behavior, what was? Surprisingly, it was a question few of Lipton's peers wanted to investigate, and he found himself unable to uphold the traditional views he was meant to be teaching. So he left to study this phenomenon in the field now known as epigenetics, the science above the genes. He needed to better understand the intelligence that was guiding cellular behavior, and this led him towards the science of consciousness. And here, he began to get answers. Lipton identified antenna-like protrusions or cell receptors that sit on the outer cell wall. Their purpose is to receive incoming signals from the biological environment, largely chemical and hormonal, which inform cell behavior. Lipton asserts that these environmental signals are activated by the power of our thoughts. Coherent positive thinking optimizes the cell environment, which leads to healthy, constructive cell behavior. But the opposite's also true, as Bruce states here. The picture that we think about is actually translated into chemistry by the brain. So uh, if you have a picture of love in your mind, the brain releases some very wonderful chemistry into the blood. But just to show you a different picture is if I have a picture of fear in my mind, I'm afraid of something, my brain translates fear with different chemicals, stress hormones, cortisol, norepinephrine, uh, factors that affect the immune system. So basically, in a state of conscious fear, the brain releases chemistry that complements fear. That chemistry goes into the body's blood, and that changes the behavior and the genetics of the person. If our mind directs cell activity, and health is not genetically predetermined, then the first lesson Bruce teaches us is this. We are free. Free to create the health we would choose to experience in our life. For instance, something like cancer doesn't just happen because a gene was programmed for it to do so. Something like cancer happens because it's a cell's reaction to something happening in that cell's environment. And what are the main detriments to our cell's environment? Stress, fear, overthinking, and likely worst of all, anger. Freedom from these will improve your health as your cells start communicating and working together more effectively. But this requires daily concerted effort, which can be hard work. Fortunately, there's an easy way to reset the mind and body to get free of these influences. Place your hand on your solar plexus, breathe into your belly, and become aware of any sensations you feel around your chest. The beating of the heart, movement of the lungs. Express gratitude to these sensations. Breathe, feel, and appreciate. Within a minute, your mind and body will be harmonized. And once there, stay there for as long as you can. Do this throughout the day, and this will become your default mind-body setting. To get good at creating health requires assuming mastery of the thoughts you choose to think. Your conscious mind is a creation machine. Whatever you put into that machine produces frequencies and biological commands that are directly translated into cell action. Fill it with good stuff, and good stuff will translate into your biology. So, when you catch the mind thinking negatively, hit the reset. Hard work at first, but your neurology will evolve to support more positive, peaceful thinking over time, and you'll create health in your body. We are free, but that freedom must be exercised. The second important thing Bruce taught me is this. Cell biology can change in an instant. In this interview with the late great Art Bell, Bruce reveals something truly extraordinary. The character, behavior, or traits of the cells change when I put it in one culture environment or change the environment and put them in another environment. They change their behavior, they change their expression, that they were healthy or sick, or they change into different kinds of cells. And Are you suggesting it's adaptation? Well, it's basically, it is a dynamic process where life is continuously reading the environment 
and adjusting the biology to conform oh. to the perception of that environment. So it's not your, your genes are not your fixed fate. Genes are potentials. What you do with those potentials are based on how you see the environment. So you can talk about, for example, a, a person who has uh, terminal cancer and they have bought into the story that this is the end and, this, and you know, their life is waning right now. And all of a sudden, they just get this belief change that says, no, I'm not going to buy that. I, I'm not buying that. And they get up and they get out and they exhibit what's called a spontaneous remission. It's like, what happened in this case is, is they changed something about their perception. Belief changed. Uh, you can see it in another case, multiple personalities. Multiple personalities in one personality can have blue eyes and then switch to the other personality and have gray eyes. In, in really? Less than, yes. In really? Less than a that, that, that's documented. Yes, and, and what else is documented is this, is that they can have allergies in one personality and less than a minute later change personalities and those things that would have caused a severe allergic reaction just a minute before. Oh, okay, slow up. I, I really need to understand that yeah. th this is true. You're saying that a person with multiple personalities, yeah. uh, one of them can have blue eyes, but when they switch personalities, actually it's documented the eyes... Change don't... color right there in front of your face. Uh. We just heard Bruce talking about something almost unbelievable, eye colors changing in the space of an instant. Likewise, reports of spontaneous cancer remission are not uncommon, ranging in the thousands every year. It's like a switch has flipped somehow, and the biology changes to a new state of being. The antenna-like receptors on the cells simply pick up a new signal and attune to a new set of commands. Genes are reconfigured and the cells reorganize. Now, multiple personality disorder and spontaneous cancer remissions are pretty extreme examples, but they demonstrate what can happen when the mind and its mental energy changes. A complete physical change follows, so how can we apply this to our advantage? Well, let's examine the main causes of mind-body dysfunction. Our fears, anger, painful memories, or confused thoughts. Where do these exist? For the most part, either in the past or an imagined future. Where they do not exist and have no power is right here in this instant. If your mind is fully aware of what's happening now, it exists in a more free and pure state. And this is the energy that can reset our cells to health. Cell biology can change in an instant. This instant. It, the genes are, are like give you a propensity to get a disease, but that propensity is based on how you perceive life. My God, no wonder everybody's sick. Every day is filled with more stress than the day before. And if you buy into the stress, you take that disharmonious vibration, essentially, bring it in your life, and you end up with disharmony inside your body. Your life is a reflection of what you see. The third lesson is this. Perception is health. The world we perceive outside us becomes the world we experience within. As we look out at the world and perceive other people, we produce associated brain activity, nerve impulses, hormones, and physical reactions. And we are ultimately in charge of all of it by choosing the way we experience things. Let's check out the news today. What have we got? Political pieces designed to make me feel outraged, react, comment, and click for more. We've got hit pieces designed to make me dislike my fellow man or feel alienated from them. Things to make me scared and things to make me buy stuff. Things to make me think a certain way. So what has reading one page of the news done to my mind and body? Wow, it's taken me through anger, fear, outrage and division. And having shaped my perceptions and emotions, this now shapes my health. Heart rate, blood pressure, stress hormones, circulation. My biology is living out everything I've just encountered. But it didn't have to be that way. I can read the news, but not let it affect my mind or determine my health. I can be free of such influences. And if I want, I can even choose to feel compassion for the people I read about in the news, or even send them healing intentions, which if you know anything about the science of consciousness, will not only help the world around me, but also help improve the health within me. That's the power of perception. An influence, which is negative, can become the cause of something positive. Now why don't we go for a walk? and see what we can see. I see trees of green Red roses too I see them bloom For me and you When I see them I say What a wonderful world Not 
Shades of white The bright blessed day The dark sacred night And now say to myself What a wonderful world